Glenn, it is my pleasure to be working together with you again, brother. Thank you, Brooks. Great last, to see you. Last week, we were taking a look at how God is a friend of ours. This week, we're taking a look at how God is our Father, and He's a good Father. Yes, I love that, and I love our passage, our key passage, Luke 15, 20 to 24. This is known as the prodigal son right. uh, passage. Um, also, I've heard some preachers uh, refer to it as the prodigal father passage. I've heard passage. that. I've yeah. heard that. Why would they do that? Well, the word prodigal, Brooks, uh, <laughs> one of the meanings is, is extravagant. <laughs> <laughs> extravagant. And so, yes, we see the son um, deciding to live an extravagant lifestyle. But then you can apply um, that word ex- extravagant to how his father uh, reacts to that and the type of love Absolutely. that he shows the son. And so it's really an extraordinary story, and we want to encourage you to read it. Luke 15, 20 to 24, uh, take some time and just read through that prodigal son story. See the extravagance of the father. Yes. I like that. I tell you what, I love that the things that we see in this story is that one things we one of the things that we see is that God never gives mm-hmm. up on us. What yeah. a great thought that this son had gone out, done horrible things, comes home, and then dads run into him, and he never gives up on us. And that he demonstrates love to his children always. And he mm-hmm. did that by giving him the robe and by giving him the shoes and by giving him the, the ring and basically accepting him back into the family. Yeah, And that's so cool. So maybe you can talk to yourself or in your group or among your family, how has God recently shown his love to you? So here's another cool thing that I love, that God loves beyond his child's performance. Because I don't know about you, brother, but sometimes I don't do right. Absolutely. And we are in such a performance-based society, and so many times people make religion performance-based, and it's not. It's by grace that we're saved, and it's by grace that we live. Yes. And God looks beyond our performance. That's so great. Yeah. Totally agree that you don't do things right. Um, And neither do I. (laughs) We all fall short, though, don't we? All uh, of us. I've heard the the definition um, of grace like this. uh, Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. And this point points out that we're getting what we don't deserve, which is our Heavenly Father's love, despite the fact that... uh, we have chosen our own way. Absolutely. And so that's a that's a great. Maybe they truth. should talk about God's grace and how has God been gracious to you recently. So point number four. You I have love, a fourth point. Tell me about yes, the fourth point. Yes, and point four and five to me kind of go together. I agree. Um, I like the uh, the point here that our good father celebrates the gift of his children. Yeah. And have you ever been to somebody's house that just seems so perfect that you don't feel relaxed there? It was and, your house, brother. Oh, oh see, I'm <laughs> sorry. I want you to feel relaxed there. But sometimes, you know, it just feels like, do I really belong here? Can I really mm. relax here? Everything's just so perfect. And yet, Jesus is telling us through this story that, uh, that that's not how God sees us. Right. He's saying, no, you, I see you actually as a gift to me. And so come on in to my kingdom and feel relaxed and enjoy. And uh, that's, that's pretty... It's uh, a great view because so often we don't see ourselves as that. Yes. And I mean, so if we can look at ourselves as God sees us... That's, that's a deal breaker right there. It that's really is. It really is. I mean, that's super cool. We can belong. Yeah. And so that ties into me with point number five, that our good father extravagantly sacrifices for his kids, and the party begins there. Yeah. <laughs> um, the best party to me is where you feel like you can belong, where you feel like you're accepted, and then you can relax and let loose and have party time. And um, because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, um, we belong. 
Yeah. And, and our Heavenly Father accepts us. That's so great. You know, it's interesting because last week we can, I think of the great theologians, um, Bill and Ted. Yes. Who, who last week. Excellent, We dude. saw be excellent to one yeah. another, and then this week it's party on, dude. So, you know, <laughs> I, I love that. But that God does, he celebrates us, and that's yeah. a cool thing. Yeah. Because so often we don't feel like we're worth being celebrated. I think that's awesome. And you were challenged um, by Paul here in Ephesians 5 to live life, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And so we're challenged to love people sacrificially. And maybe that would be a great question to end with. Who has I God think that's put definitely who's God put in your life that you need to show a sacrificial love for? And how can you do that? Nice.